um, if you, on the back of your bulletin, there's a little place for notes. If you could write for a title, Praying in Jesus' Name. Praying in Jesus' Name. And I would encourage you to take many notes. Uh, this is going to be a very, very important message for you uh, in your quest to become a successful praying person. I assume you want to have success in your prayers. I was taking my daughter to ballet class last week, and she said to me, hey, Dad, I want to, um, Father, I want to buy my friend a gift, a new girl in our class, can I have some money? I said, how much? She says, $40. Now, isn't that ridiculous? <laughs> I mean, is this, is your friend your mother? Is your friend your father? Is this some girl that, ain't, that I don't feed? I don't, I, my wife did not bear this child. This is a girl outside of my family? Yes. $40? How about 20 Which I thought was generous. She goes, 35 I say, how about 20 She says, 30 I said, how about 20 <laughs> She ended up getting 20 um, But my friend who was in the car with us says, Kelly, why don't you ask your father for his credit card? I'm like, ah, get out. <laughs> what are you? Man, you're supposed to be on my side trying to give her my credit card. So I ended up having going shopping. I, and then she said, Dad, you have to go. She said, just drop me off at the store. Her, her, uh, her thing's in PB. Drop me off at the store, and I'll just walk from the store. I said, no, 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 no. no. I'm going to go with you. You know, we ain't going to walk around PB by yourself. And Ain't nothing wrong with PB, but I don't want my daughter walking by myself nowhere. You know, whether it be in the mall, anywhere. I want to be with her or someone be with her. So don't, if you're from PB, I didn't mean that to slam PB. Um, so I go with her, and we go to a store. And, you know, females, and this is not a slam on females, but females have been gifted with a incredible ability to shop. I don't know where y'all get it, because even little girls, I mean, she, I don't know how she, but we go into a store, how, how, this is how guys shop, this is how guys shop, and fellas, give me an amen if I'm telling you the truth, we walk into a store and go, okay, this is it, <laughs> amen, amen, hey, let's, let's get this done real quick, girls walk into the store, and it's not a slam, this is just, they love, they feel, smell it maybe, you know. Uh, that's nice. Okay, that's nice. Buy it then. Oh, no, I want to do the same thing to this one now. I want to look over here. Uh, that's nice too. <laughs> and I'm like, buy it then. Then we leave. And I'm like, there's a whole lot of stuff in here. Why are we leaving? Well, we might come back. <laughs> That's where I was like, I'll give you $40. I'll do anything. <laughs> if I was to give her my credit card and she went to the counter to buy anything with my credit card, the person that she was buying it from would have to make some assumptions. One, that she knows the owner of the credit card, right? They would have to make another assumption that she has a good relationship with the person who owns the credit card, right? When you pray in Jesus' name, you are praying to get something on his credit, not your credit. You never want to say, God, give this according to my goodness. Whoa, don't be that dumb. You never want to say, in my name, God, based on my holiness, you pray, the Bible says pray in Jesus' name. If you ask in my name, you are asking with his credit. And there are five assumptions we're going to make that need to be true for in Jesus' name to work for you. That, and they're very similar to the assumptions that you would have to make if you were using someone's credit card. Amen? You understand what I'm saying? Okay, before I go into explaining what those five things are, first let me tell you this. The Bible says if you ask anything in my name or whatever what does whatever mean it means whatever it means anything it means ask anything now many of you are saying well it doesn't really mean that miles it means that church <laughs> 
It does. God, that he ain't speaking pigeon, he ain't trying to, you know, bob and weave with his words. He said, ask me whatever. The reason you don't ask whatever is several. One, you may not ask a whatever prayer because you don't believe God will do it. Your faith is only this big. Man, I sure would love to ask this, but God probably won't do that for me. Who's to say that? Not God. That's you. Your faith is too small. You might not ask whatever because you don't think God can do it. Your faith is too small. You might not ask God because you don't think you're worth it. You're not. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to put you down. I'm not. The Bible says that God loves us and blesses us according to his grace. Grace means undeserved love. It means you're not worthy. I'm not worthy. No human is worthy of God's love. He loves us because of his love, not our goodness. So therefore, next time you think I'm not worthy, say, that's true. So therefore, that's not an issue anymore. You'll never be worthy. Imagine this. Dear God, I'm asking you because of, for this because I think I deserve it. <laughs> what kind of prayer is that? No, God, I'm not worthy of anything you would ever give me but I ask by faith because you tell me to, and you tell me you love me. It's all based on faith. So whenever you start wrestling, oh, how big should my prayer be? It's all going to be based on your faith. And check this out. If you have a little bit of faith, you know how you can increase your faith? It's very, very simple. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. The Bible says that faith is the substance of things hoped for, something you want, and the evidence of things not seen. The Bible says we put our faith in the Word of God, not in our experience, not in what we feel, not in any person, because people will let you down. People will disappoint you. Don't put people up here. No person ever. Only Jesus. People will let you down. So the minute you think, well, let me see if I can find something. You want to find something wrong with me? I'll tell you. You don't have to look. <laughs> don't waste your time looking. I'll tell you. Don't, don't do that. Say, Jesus is the only one I'm going to look to. That's the only one I'm going to trust and put my faith in. If you want to increase your faith, increase your knowledge of the Word of God and increase your trust in that Word of God. That's how you increase your faith. Read the Word of God more. Your faith will grow. Study the Word of God more. Your faith will grow. Memorize the Word of God. Your faith will grow. That's how faith grows. That's what the Bible says. When your faith grows, watch this. When your faith grows, your prayers get bigger. God, I, you know what? God, I pray, some of y'all pray, Lord, bless my food. That's about as much faith as you got. That your mother who's been cooking for 40 years can cook a good meal. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Dear God, your mother ain't, ain't nothing wrong with that food. Your mother hooked it up. She done made macaroni and cheese for 47 years. It's all in the box. Boil it, bam, bam. <laughs> Dear God, I pray that I can be used to lead thousands to the Lord. Now we're talking. I pray that my father who has terminal cancer, a woman came to me today, father's dying of cancer, that you would either save him before he dies or heal him. That's praying. Come on now. Ask me something. Don't be throwing these little baby prayers at me. Ask me something. My daughter, I have three daughters. My oldest daughter asks me for stuff constantly. She doesn't want to ask me stuff. She tries to convince me why I need to give it to her. It's total manipulation. Daddy, you need to do this because of this, because of this, because of this, because of this, because of this. Like I'm stupid. And then I give it to her because she drives me crazy. My middle daughter, though, asks me for nothing. And then when she wants something, she'll kind of, Dad, um, uh, um, how are you feeling today? <laughs> um, I was wondering if, um, I know, what, yeah, I know her, so I know she's getting ready to ask me something. She, never, she doesn't want to ask because she's so humble, she's so sweet. Or she'll go to my wife. You think daddy will do this, and I don't want to ask him. And, you know, last time I asked him, he threw the clock against the wall and everything. <laughs> <laughs> he 
you know, I don't want, he might say no, and do you think he's in a good mood, do you think, you know, is, is, uh, is he having any stress from minutes, what, what's going on, and my wife, and when I hear this, I'm like, tell her to come ask me herself, because I want her to sit there with me and talk to me, that's how God is, come ask me, oh, I don't know if I should ask God, ask me anything, because I want to bless you, get that in your head, Get that in your head. And if you're struggling, I don't know if I have enough faith, start reading the Bible. Go in the bookstore and get a daily walk. Say, I want a daily walk. They know what it is. It's a little pamphlet. It has a, a, a Bible reading for every day. There's, you get one a month, and it has a Bible reading for every day and a little thing to read so you know what you're reading about and watch your faith grow. Now, let's look at five things, five things. Five things that have to be true if you're going to pray in Jesus' name and be successful. Same five things apply if you're going to use someone's credit card. The first thing is that you need to know who owns the credit card. You have to be a child of God. You have to be a Christian. You can't play in G pray in Jesus' name if Jesus is not your Savior. It don't work. It means nothing. You can't. You can say, well, you know, I'm, I'm American. I'm a good person. Why can't? No, it don't work that way. God does not bless Americans because they're American. Is he your spiritual father? When my, if I gave my card to my daughter, they would say, uh, Kelly, this says uh, Miles. Obviously, your name is not Miles. Who is this? That's my dad. Is God your dad? Ooh, break it down, break it down. The Bible says, to all those who believed in him, he gave the right to become his child. The Bible says you're born a sinner. The Bible says the penalty of sin is death. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart God raised him from the de dead, then you can become his child. If you haven't done that, you're not his child. Now, I'm going to say something that's going to shock you and may even upset you. Jesus talking to the Pharisees, religious men, rabbis, and they didn't trust in Jesus. They denied Christ. He told them, your father is the devil. Your father ain't the father of Abraham. If your father was a God in heaven, you would know me, Jesus says, because I come from the father. So who's your father? Is Jesus your father and, and God the father in heaven, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, only because you've asked him to be your savior? Or is the devil your father by default? Yes, you have to ask question. It's one or the other. Now, if you, he's telling me my father's a devil. I'm not a devil worshiper. I'm not saying you're a devil worshiper. I'm saying that the only way God can be your father is that you surrendered your life to Christ and you accepted the only salvation he's provided. That's the only way he could be your daddy. That's the only way he could be your daddy. And if you think there's another way he could be your daddy, you need to find that out based on fact and show me or show yourself. But don't just assume it. Don't assume it. Know it by fact. Okay, we don't put our, 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 our faith in feeling or rumor or popular opinion, fact. So the first thing you have to do is say, hey, God is my father. Let me read a verse to you. It says in Psalm 66, 18, if I regard sin in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. The Bible says in Proverbs 15, 29, the Lord is far from the wicked. And let me tell you something, being wicked is not necessarily something you have to be doing and being a sinner is not something you're actually doing necessarily. It's something you are. When you are a sinner, it doesn't mean you're going around killing people. It doesn't mean you're going around stealing. It's your spiritual condition, your inability to serve God spiritually. That's the sinner. There are some great, successful, kind people who by nature are sinners. And that sinful condition is all that's required to be separated from God forever. It's not that I'm worse than him, or I'm a Charles Manson, or I'm a, you know, David Berkowitz, son of Sam, whatever it is. No, no, no. I am, my condition is fallen. It's sinful. He says, God is far from the wicked. But let me tell you something. He's listening and asking, waiting for you to ask him to forgive you. That's what he wants. He wants you to ask him to forgive you. He wants you to recognize and acknowledge that he is the Lord. The Bible says in John 17, 3, this is eternal life, that they may know Jesus, the only true God, and Jesus whom, he's, whom you sent, that they may know, you may know him intimately. Question number one, and you're going to have an opportunity later on to give your life to Christ and say, yes, I want to be his child. 
And if you choose to walk away from that fact, if you choose to doubt it, I challenge you to find out that you're walking away from something for the right reason and that you know there's another way to God. You better know that. Don't guess because I would hate for you to die and go, here, here I am, God. And God go, no, 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 I never knew you. Because many people are going to come and say, Lord, Lord, I did this in your name. Lord, Lord, I went to the rock. Lord, Lord, I, I did this. And he's like, nah, I never knew you. Matthew 27, Matthew chapter 7 talks about that. People are going to say they knew God. They did good things in God's name. And God's going to say, mm, I, I, I never knew you. I don't, I don't remember who you are. Be gone into out of darkness. So be sure that Jesus Christ is your Savior. The next point, if you're going to get what you ask for in Jesus' name, is you have to have a good relationship with the person who owns the credit card. Did your daddy give you this card? Uh, well, I kind of took it out of his wallet when he was sleeping because he was mad. We had a fight, and uh, he really didn't want me to have it. Let me tell you something. You and God don't have a good relationship, yet you're asking him for a woman. God, you know, I, I don't want to do what you say, but can you give me what I want? No, don't work that way. Write this verse down. John 15, 7. John 15, 7. Read this verse. It says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and I sh it shall be done for you. Hey, if you abide in me, if you trust in me, rely on me, let me guide you, teach you, encourage you, counsel you, transform you. If you abide in me, rely on me, and my words, right here, and my words abide in you. You read them, you memorize them, you talk about them, you study them, you teach them. If you abide in me, and my word abides in you, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, if you don't just go to church and look at it on Sunday and, and you do read it all week and you do work on understanding it, learning it, applying it in your life, asking the word that's living and active, the word is living and active, and you ask it to counsel you all week. If you do that, then you'll ask and it'll be done. Do you do that? Oh, man, I just go to church on Sunday. I might do a devotion every now and then, but I don't have time. Then don't ask. Don't ask. That's like saying, God, I don't have time for you, but can you give me this? Uh, matter of fact, I only have time to ask you for what I want. <laughs> what kind of relationship is that? It's a relationship. Christianity is a relationship. So the so question you have to say, is, let, 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 let me get it straight. You're telling me that if I read my word more faithfully, if I memorize these verses you talk about every week, if I start thinking about them and even maybe one day talking about them with other people, that's a novel thing. Wow. Talking about God to people? If I do that, then you will ask what you desire and it shall be done. Now, you may be saying, well, that's manipulating God. You cannot manipulate God. Because here's what's going to happen. You're going <laughs> to, this is the funny part. This is where people, this is where humans can be so stupid. And that applies to all of us. We all do this. We try to manipulate. Okay, God, I'm going to read a little bit. Can I have this? God's like, no, fool, don't work that way. Read the book. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, you, you do your, here's the, you read your Bible. Okay, I read my few verses. Okay, God, please give me a million dollars. I read five verses. No, 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 no. Read it. Let the word speak to you. Let the word change you. Let the word influence you. Interact with the word. Write in a journal. What are you learning? What's it saying to you? Let it abide in you. Let it change you. And guess what's going to happen? Your prayer is going to change. You make it bigger, make it smaller, make it go right, go left, it's going to change. But he says, if you do that, I'm going to give you the desires of your heart. That means I'm going to change your desires. I'm going to affect your desires. Another way, look, look, write down 1 John 3, 22. Write down 1 John 3, 22. In 1 John 3, 22, it says, whatever, there it is again, whatever. Everybody say whatever. 
Y'all like saying that, huh? It says, whatever we ask, we receive from him because, watch this, because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Wow. You mean, the Bible says that if I abide, I'll get it. If I do what he says, I'll get it. Yes. The only way you can love God is to obey God. That is the definition of loving God. If you get up in the morning and say, God, I love you, he'll say, let's see, show me. Don't, you know, don't tell me what you feel. I mean, what you feel is cool. That's cool. There's nothing wrong with that. But don't think that that's it. You prove that you love God by what you do. And what you do is simply obeying God. When people get saved, you'll see. We have altar calls. I would tell them. You got one responsibility for the rest of your life is obey God. When you get up in the morning tomorrow, you need to go, God, what do you want me to do today? That's all he wants to hear. Your servant is here to serve. What do you want me to do? That's it. That is the definition of loving God. Let me tell you something. God is looking for people who obey him. He said, are, are you going to obey me? Nah, I can't rely on you. Are you going to obey me? Nah, you never listen to me. Are you going to obey me? I, 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 oh, y'all want everything. You never want to do what I say. Uh, how about you? Are you going to obey me? Yes, sir. Oh. Go over there and do that. <laughs> Good. Go over there and do it again. Good. Go over there and pray for that person. Boom. Go over there and read your Bible for an hour. <sighs> what else, sir? What would you like me to do for you? Oh, God, uh, I kind of want a woman. Can you help a brother out? <laughs> okay. Go get a haircut and go take a shower. Okay. <laughs> we'll start with that. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> you're taking this John the Baptist thing too far, okay? <laughs> Y'all got camel's hair on and eating locusts and stuff. <laughs> he says, obey him. Point number three. You got to make, not only do you have to know the person who owns a credit card, you got to know God. Got to have a good relationship with God by obeying God. You have to ask according to what God would want you to ask. Ask and pray according to his will. Oh, well, that's the catch. This is not what I want. It's what he wants. Oh, man, hey, that's bogus. This doesn't work anymore. It's no good. That whatever thing is a lie. No, God don't lie. We just don't understand what he's saying. Let me explain it to you. 1 John, write down 1 John 5, 14 to 15. 1 John 1, and then a John, chapter 5, verse 14 to 15. The reason we have 1 John, 2 John, 3 John are three epistles that John wrote, and he numbered them, 1, 2, 3. 1 John 5, let me read this to you. Now, this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything or whatever, According to his will, he hears us. Ooh. So the Bible says. Now, so you're saying, well, that takes the whatever out of it. Oh, no. Have you ever been dating somebody? Or you meet somebody and you're like, dear God, I just pray that this can be the one. Please let us just hook up forever. How, you know what I'm talking about? Say amen if you know what I'm talking about. I mean, you could apply it to when you're 15. So it doesn't, any time in your life, it doesn't have to be now. Just say amen if you know what I'm talking about. Dear God, I just want this to be the one. And God in heaven is going to the angels. They have no idea the issues homegirl got. Or the issues that guy got, okay? Just so I can be both genders, okay? It's not a girl bashing, but I can guy bashing thing. But he, you have no idea, and God is saying to you, no, no. She is really a he. <laughs> Here you are walking in the mall, here's my woman, man. <laughs> Ooh, in 
Harry is really Harry, okay? You're praying, and God is trying to help you. He's trying to warn you, but you don't want to hear it because you want what you want. And then you find out that Harriet's a Harry, and you go, God, how come you didn't tell me? I tried to tell you, but you were so hard-headed. God, I want what I want. Oh, my goodness, I'm so in love. <laughs> Dear God, please give me a million dollars. What if God said, now, I want to give you two. Do you want my will or your will? Dear God, thy will be done. <laughs> If you pray that you want what you want instead of what God wants, you are telling God that you know better than he does. God, I know me better than you know me because I've been me all my life. And I know what I want. So can you please just give me what I want and not what you want because I know what will make me happier better than you know what will make me happier. That's why I haven't been happy all my life because all the things I thought, I learned all these lessons from all of this. No, you've been wrong. You have to say, Lord, I trust and know that you know everything about me better than me and you know what's better for me than me. Here's what I want, but what's your will? I told you last week we were having a meeting with the buildings and the building and it's going, it, it, the meeting couldn't have gone better. And, but what's happening in the process of time, and we have signed an agreement to, a couple weeks ago we couldn't even talk about it to anybody anymore because of a whole bunch of stuff. And hopefully soon that will be lifted. But, and, and you'll un learn about this incredible story. But what God's doing, God, I prayed for this. God has said, I have something better for you. Are you open to that? And he said that to me through a person, because this person said to me, why don't you ask for this and this? And I was like, I just want this. I mean, yeah, it's cool and everything, but let's do this. For he said, no, 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 you don't understand. Da -da -da -da, look at this, look at this. And God was trying to do this to me. Did you listen to him? I'm trying to hook you up. God is doing this. Now I'm like, God, you know what? Whatever you want. Because I, I didn't see all that. Whatever you want. What you need to do is tell God what you want. God, I want this. But what do you want? What do you say? Because God, he can have something different for you. Now, you may have the same prayer. Dear God, give me a million dollars. And God may say, listen, if I give you a million dollars, your life is going to become perverted again. Your pride is going to get puffed up. It's going to ruin you. So, so ask me for 200000 And ask me to give it to you over three years. And ask me to teach you how to manage it so it becomes $20 million. And ask me to teach you how to be generous with it. Ask me to teach you how to be, not hold on to it, not fear losing it. Ask me to teach you how to enjoy it. Wow, God. That's better than my prayer. Of course, because I'm smarter than you all the time. <laughs> he is. So that's why you got to say, dear God, here's what I want. Because really what you want, you just want the money. You don't know what a million dollars is. You just want a lot of money because you think a million dollars is going to give you financial security for the rest of your life, which is a lie. But you think so. So you got, I want a million dollars. God's saying, no, what you really want is really not the one. You really don't want to worry about money. That's really what you're saying. So let me, let me turn your prayer this way. But are you open to that? You got to be open to that. You got to be. Because God, what God wants for you is infinitely better. Write this down. I'm going to give you a sentence to write down. And it's about 20 words. So give yourself some space to write this down. Write, O oh Lord, L-O-R-D, grant that I may do thy will. Grant that I may do thy will. Grant that I may do thy will as if it were my will. As if it were my will. That you may do my will. That you 
may do my will as if it were your will. As if it were your will. Lord, I want to do everything you want me to do so you will do everything I want you to do. Now, is that manipulation? No. It means, all it means is this. Lord, I want to desire everything you desire. So when I desire it, it's the same thing you're desiring it. And when you're desiring it, it's the same thing I'm desiring it. And it's always the same. That's what I want. So when I ask something, it's exactly what you want me to ask for. It's as big or as gracious or as humble as you would want. That's all I want. That's the, how you got to pray. Praying in Jesus' name is not about me, 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 me. Let me manipulate God for me, 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 me. Praying about Jesus' name is saying, Lord, I want to step into the supernatural and walk on water like Peter. Miracle after miracle. But you know what? I am so lame mentally and so lame spiritually that my faith can't handle that. So I want to walk by faith on your terms, and I want to walk on your miracles, and I want to walk in the deepness, on deep water that you say I can't walk on because if it was up to me, I'll never go anywhere. I'll stay safe here in the little boat, tied up to the dock, rowing, thinking I'm doing something like Gilligan, and now here I am safe. I want to go out there into the ocean and do big things for you, but the only way I can do that is to do it your way. That's a fact. That's a fact. And even if you have someone who's a visionary, and I am a visionary, I see all this. God says, you're only down here, Miles. You don't see what I'm, you don't see what I'm trying to tell you. You don't see what I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you this. I'm like, oh, I don't know, God. Ugh, look. Fourth thing, you have to ask things that will glorify God. Ask things that will glorify God. John 14, write down John chapter 14, verse 13 and 14. John chapter 14, verse 13 and 14. Write down Matthew 5, 16. I'm going to give you a few verses here. Matthew 5, 16. Write down John 15, verse 16. John 15, verse 16. Let me read them to you. John 14, verse 13 says, Whatever you ask in my name, whatever that I will do that the Father or so the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. What you're asking for is going to glorify God or glorify you? Dear God, I want to have a big business. Why? Are you going to honor me with your business? Are you going to honor me with your profits? Are you going to be a godly boss? Are you going to encourage your employees? Are you going to be honest? You're going to cut corners? You're going to cheat? If I want to take the business, are you going to want to complain? What are you going to do with your business? Oh, okay. I want you to glorify me with your business. Dear God, I want to get this nice car. Why? Are you going to try to, look, try to drive down the street, leaning into the side, looking like a little gangster, trying to be cool? Or are you going to honor me with your car? <laughs> Dear God, I want to learn how to do that um, uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in the surfing. I don't surf. I, I, I'm amazed at surfers, how they do what they do. Um, I would love to be able to go and ride the wave, do all that kind of stuff. And, and you know, uh, why do you want to do that? Oh, I want to pick up the chicks. <laughs> no, God, I'm going to give glory to you. If you let me how to do that, give me a little tiny surfboard. I'll be the baddest dude out there, win all these trophies. I'm going to give you glory. I'm going to give you glory. I want to get on fear factor. Why? The whole world's going to know Jesus. I'm going I'm to be able to say Jesus' name over and over again on this show. Every time they ask me a question, Octavia, she's going to say, Jesus this. Jesus, they're going to get so tired of her. <laughs> Make me win, I'll shut up. That ain't true. She's going to keep talking. Whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. Why? That the Father may be glorified. Don't be asking for stuff that's going to glorify you. Puff up your pride. Lord, I want this thing. Why? What are you going to do with it? Are you going to be faithful? Are you going to give me credit? Man, God, I 
was going to try and say, I did it. I was thinking how cool it was going to make me. I was thinking how important I was going to be. Don't ask me that. I'm not interested in puffing you up. I'm not interested in making you look good over me. Now, you're going to look good because you're hanging with me, God says. But it ain't about you. It's about me because I'm God. I'm not talking about Miles. I'm talking about God. I'm going to hit my chest. It's God. He's saying it's about me. He says in, in, in John 15, 16, it says, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should bear fruit and that your fruit shall remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. Guess what? God, I want you to give this to me so I can bear spiritual fruit. I don't want to be success in life just be successful in life just so I can be successful and have more stuff. I want to do it so I can bear fruit. My house I will use for your ministry. My car I will use for whatever you want. My money I will use for whatever you want. My intelligence, my experience I will use for whatever you want to glorify you, not to glorify me, not to honor me, not to honor people. So what you're asking for is it going to glorify God. That's the question. So when you when you whenever your prayer request is, Lord, I hope this is what you want, and I want to honor you with it. I'm going to do it the best of my God-given ability, and I'm going to pray through every step. I'm going to do it just the way you want. Are you saying that? If you're not saying that, don't pray in Jesus' name. That's, that's the character he wants you to pray in. The last point is that you not only have to know the person who owns the credit card, know Christ. You have to have a good relationship with Christ. You've got to be walking and abiding and obeying his commandments. You've got to pray according to his will. You've got to pray according to what will glorify him, and you've got to be able to be, be able to glorify him if the prayer is answered. Lastly, you have to believe that the credit card can make the purchase. Where's my credit card? Here's my credit card. You ever go to the store? And you go shopping, and especially when you're new with credit cards and you don't realize that there's a limit. I was with a lady one time, a couple, was a very wealthy couple, and the lady was so sweet. She was like, I don't know how we got on this topic, but she eventually said in the conversation that, oh, the husband was talking about how she overdrew their checking account. And she says, well, there were checks still in the checkbook, so I figured there was money there. I was like, whoa, let me get out of this car. I think there's going to be some words. That <laughs> it was so funny. So you think plastic? Well, I just charge it. Many of you had tens of thousands of dollars of credit uh, charged up because you just charged it. And you come to the thing, and you got your little card, and they're ringing stuff up, 20 sweaters, seven pairs of shoes, five suits, you know, 20 shirts, 19 ties. And then you put the, you swap the card, and the bill's so high that when you swap it, the card just goes, ugh. It just starts smoking. <laughs> I can't handle all this money. <laughs> you have to believe that when you swipe it, you're not going to be like this. As she's looking on a, oh, can we try that again, please? Whoop. And, and, and the little machine goes, dee, 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 dee. <laughs> security, <laughs> security. You have to believe that God can and will fulfill the request. Turn, I mean, turn or write down Matthew 21, 22. 21, 22. Says, whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you receive. What sense does it make to do this? Oh, dear God, I just pray that. I can really do good on my test, even though I'm so stupid. <laughs> and I knew I don't know anything you're going to ask me. And, I, you know, I'm probably going to fail, but can you give me a good grade? What, what sense does that make? That don't make any sense. Dear God, please may my friend get saved. You know, I know he probably ain't ever going to get saved. What sense does that make? No, dear God, I believe in the, Lord, I have doubt, but please help me with my doubt. Help me with my lack of faith. Help me see the impossible. You parted the Red Sea for Moses. You, you healed the blind man through Jesus. You raised the little boy through Elijah. Lord, do something in my life. I believe, I have faith that you are the same God today as in the Bible. Even in the place where I'm, I'm doubt or I'm fearful, please answer this prayer. I believe you can do it. That's what God wants. God is standing back here going, come on, give me some. 
Show me some passion. Show me some desire. Pursue. Show me that you really want this. Show me you really believe this. Don't just casually like, well, you know, I just throw up a little Jesus name, this, and, you know, in the Lord's name and God's name, and, you know, oh, do this for me, God, in Jesus' name, whatever. Uh uh-uh. Pursue me, God says. Read your Bible. Think about it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Get this little verse and, and, and look at it all week. Whatever I ask, whatever I ask, whatever I ask in Jesus' name. I got to abide in him. I got to do his commandments. I got to pray according to his will. I got to bear fruit. I got to glorify God. Memorize, study, pursue God. Become a good praying person. Pray his word. When you pray his word, what you're doing is you're taking his promises and throwing them back to him. God, you said. You know, when my kids say, I say, I start thinking, whoa, oh, Lord, did I really say that? How do I get out of this? No, what I really meant was this. But when they, when they say, Dad, you said, they got me. They got me. All right, I'm good. I ain't saying nothing to you no more. You, know. <laughs> you remember everything. God not only said it, he wrote it. He wrote it. Why? Because he knew he could back it up. First thing you got to do you got to make sure God is your God. In a minute, we're going to pray, and you're going to have an opportunity to say, Lord, I want to make sure you're my father. So when I go to the store, and I say, here's my credit card, God says, yep, that's my son. Go ahead, hook him up. Hook him up. You have to make sure Jesus Christ is your Savior. You have to make sure that he has forgiven you of your sin, that he knows your name as his son or daughter. that his Holy Spirit is living in your heart and that you truly have surrendered your life to him. Your motives, your desires, your dreams, that you belong to him. If you don't do that, none of this works. You have no access. Your access is through Christ. So let's all bow our heads and pray. Dear God, We thank you for your faithfulness and your goodness to us. We thank you that you are so patient with us. We thank you that you love us. Lord, as I look out in this room, you love everyone so much and you want so bad to bless them to answer their prayers, to do amazing things in their life. And you tell us so plainly in your word what we need to do to be blessed. We need to allow the word of God to transform our hearts and minds. That our prayers may be in accordance with your will, your supernatural will, your abundant, gracious, bountiful will for our life. You want things for us so much better than we can ever imagine. If we would only believe that and trust that, that you always have our best interest in mind. And I pray that you would encourage all of us to pray this week, whatever prayers. But if you have never asked Jesus to be your Savior, and you would like him to forgive you of your sin, to be your savior, to be your daddy. Pray this prayer with me, believing it to be true, believing that he loves you. In the privacy of your heart, pray, dear God, I believe that I'm a sinner. I believe my sin is wrong. I believe it will kill me and send me to hell. I don't want to go to hell. Jesus, I believe you died and rose from the dead for my sin. Please forgive me of my sin. Take over my life. 
fill me with your Holy Spirit. Please be my daddy and my God. I surrender everything to you. Thank you, Lord. If you prayed that prayer, in a minute I'm going to ask you to stand up. If you prayed that prayer, in a minute I'm going to ask you to acknowledge your salvation with Jesus by standing up. If you prayed that prayer, you just admitted to God that you have been wrong all your life and you realize that he is right. So you shouldn't have to think about standing up. You shouldn't have to wait any longer because you've been waiting all your life. Don't worry about what people are going to think because they're going to be so happy for you because all of us been there. So right now, if you pray that prayer and you ask Jesus to be your Savior, stand up in your seat and acknowledge that right now. God bless you. 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 Very good. God bless you. Stay standing, please. God bless you. If God has spoken to you and he told you he loves you and you said, Lord, I know I'm a sinner and I need you, please forgive me, and you acknowledge that he died on the cross and rose from the dead, stand to your feet and acknowledge that. He says if you're ashamed of him before man, he's going to be ashamed of you before his father. Anybody else? Stand up. God bless you. Good. God bless you. 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 If you decide, you know what, I'm not going to trust in myself. I'm not going to trust in the government. I'm not going to trust in my job. I don't want to die and go to hell. There is evil in the world. If anthrax hasn't proved that to you, what are you thinking? Anybody else? Stand up and say, I am surrendering my life to Jesus today. And I'm not ashamed of that. Anybody else? Good. Now we're going to ask all you people who are standing to do one more thing as we welcome you to the family of God. I'm going to ask you to come right down and shake my hand right down here to the altar. Let's give them a hand as they come out and see. Come on down here right now. Come on. Come up out of your seat. There you go. Just stand right there, okay? Just like that. Stand face this way. God bless you. It's going to be okay. Good, good, good. Congratulations. Come shake my hand. All right, now. Stay right there. God bless you. 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 Congratulations. 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 God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, let's keep having for them. God bless you. God bless you. Can I shake your hand? Good. Good. Let me go over here. All right, girly girls. All right. God bless you. God bless you. The Bible says, the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth, God is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. God has forgiven all of you of all your sin. The Bible says he remembers it no more. He forgot it. It's a hard thing to understand, but he did. People will remind you. The devil will remind you. You will remind you. God's like, let's move on. Why are you still tripping on the past? Let's move on. Your only job the rest of your life is very simple. One thing is to obey God. That is it. When you go home tomorrow, I mean tonight, you're going to sit in your room. Everyone's going to be gone. You're going to turn the lights off. And you're going to be sitting in bed and going, what did I just do? <laughs> okay, you just gave your life to God. Now he runs things. If he wants to change your music, you got to get rid of it. I mean, that's a no-brainer for some of that music. Talking about killing yourself and smoking crack, right? I mean, I don't think it's going to help you obey God. <laughs> some of the clothes, friends, stuff you eat, on down the line. God, what do you want to do? Most likely he's going to start making a whole lot of changes. Let him do it because he knows best. Because we've already messed up our life doing our way. Amen? We want to do it his way. That's the struggle. The devil's going to start selling you out, trying to sell you out over here, sell you this. He's going to promise you this, promise you this. It's all lies. 
Now it's time to do it God's way. The quicker you can become obedient. I'm talking obedient, fiendishly obedient. The quicker you can become like that, the quicker your life can change. But if you go, well, I'm going to go to church. I'm not going to go to church. I'm going to read my Bible. I'm not going to read my Bible. You're going to be a miserable hypocrite. Oh, I'm a Christian, but you're over there smoking weed. Oh, I'm a Christian. You're over there getting, sleeping around. You're going to be miserable. But if you say, Lord, get me friends that can help me obey God. I'm going to get in this book. I'm going to go to over here, and we're going to send you over here in a minute to talk to these people. They're going to give you a book to read. They're going to tell you about a, a, a small group to go to in the home. I'm going to get Christians in my life, and I'm going to learn how to live for God. If you do that, your life will never be the same, and you will not believe, how could I have lived without all this before? I saw Tom Broke on there crying on TV, and uh, the other guy, Dan Rather. I don't know those men. I don't know if they know God. But without God, you have every reason to be crying. Every reason, because it is scary. This anthrax, Ebola, smallpox is nothing compared to hell. Oh, you don't want to go to hell. You don't want to go. Well, you're not going to hell now. So now you don't have nothing to worry about. You just now, I'm going to obey God. Amen. So all you got to do is obey God. That's it. I'm going to ask a couple things. Next week, the pastor who brought me to Africa... His church is like five, 6,000 people in Uganda. He's going to be here with us, sharing with us, number one. Number two, next, this Friday, tomorrow I leave in the morning, this Friday we're going to be in Calgary, Canada for a crusade Friday night in the Saddle Dome with a Calgary, some hockey team. Anybody want to help me with that? The what? The Flames. I'm not a hockey guy. The, uh, Flames play, I think it holds 16 to 18,000. We have no idea how many kids are going to be there. We're having a miles ahead crusade. We are going to be doing an altar call just like this. And we pray that thousands of kids will be saved. So I would ask you to pray for us that not only kids get saved, but that we have safe travel there and safe travel back for obvious reasons. All of y'all, let God be God. Let him be God. Let's pray for them. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. For our new brothers and sisters, we thank you for our new brothers and sisters. And we pray that they would trust you. Lord, I pray we would all trust you. That we would let you be God. That we would never try to be. That we would believe that you love us big time. That we would believe you want us to ask you for things. We would believe you want to guide and direct us, teach us, mold and shape us. Lord, I pray we would believe that we need to submit to you 100%. Lord, we pray for Calgary. We pray thousands will be saved. We pray you would do an amazing thing in that arena. We pray for safety of our travel. We pray for safety at the arena. Lord, I pray for these people here that you bless them. I pray that you would bring to our mind this week to pray and ask. And I pray that when we have an opportunity to ask for something, that we would ask ourselves the questions we discussed today. Is it going to honor you? Have we been abiding? Is it according to your will? Do we believe? Is it big enough that we would increase the size of our request because the size of our God has increased in our mind. May we not ask small prayers to a big God because our prayers mirror the image of God and his size and power in our mind. Lord, forgive me for asking small things. Forgive me for believing small things. Forgive me for being discouraged from asking big things because of my lack of faith in you. Lord, thank you we give you all the credit and all the glory for this church, for the crusades and everything that's happened. It couldn't happen without you. And we are so excited as we continue to learn to release more to you. We are so excited to see you do your thing. It's so fun to be there. Lord, bless these people here tenfold, and may you rock their world now that they have you in their life. 
May they go home and go, oh, man, what did I just do? I don't know what it is, but it sure feels good. Lord, may they bear witness in their soul that their life has changed forever. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to ask all y'all to walk that way. Follow right there to the right. Ask all y'all to walk that way. We'll sing a song.